hello everyone i welcome you to my youtube channel here i basically speak about civil engineering and you will find all my video lectures regarding various topics of civil engineering over here so now i am gonna discuss the problems related to traffic engineering um, the video lectures of this are already been posted the previous two video lectures are related to the theory part of traffic engineering and you must first go through them and then only proceed for the numericals so let us take up the first question uh, this question is from the dynamic vehicular characteristics and uh, let's see what is there a vehicle traveling at 80 km per hour speed stopped within 2.5 seconds after the application of brakes determine the average skid resistance so what we have to find is the skid resistance and we are given with the initial speed of the vehicle that is 80 km per hour and the time required to stop it so the initial speed comma u is equal to eighty kilometer per hour which is equal to eighty into five by eighteen which is equal to 22.22 meters per second next is the breaking time that is t it equals to 2.5 seconds so using equation of motion which one let's use this one v is equal to u plus 80 so what we get is a will be given by u by t and that is 22.22 upon 2.5 and the acceleration comes out to be 8.88 meters per second square so this is the retardation on application of the brakes so the force applied will be f equal to ma and that is equal to considering the mass as w upon g into a because mass into the gravitational acceleration gives us the weight so we can write m as w upon g so f equal to w by g times a and also considering the friction f is equal to small f into w where small f is the coefficient of friction therefore from equation 1 and 2 we get that f times w is equal to w upon g times a so upon solving this we get f is equal to a upon g and that is 8.88 upon 9.81 which equals 0 0.905 this is the answer so let us take, up the, take, a, take the next problem that is a vehicle weighing 2 kilonewton skids through a distance equal to 40 meter 
before colliding with another parked vehicle of weight 1 kN. After collision, both the vehicles skip through a distance equal to 12 meters before stopping. Determine the initial speed of the moving vehicle and assume coefficient of friction as 0.5. So this is a problem related to the accident studies. So where the there are two vehicles and they are colliding with each other and let us assume that the vehicles after collision skid together with one particular velocity so suppose this is the vehicle A which was originally moving with V1 meter per second suppose and on application of brakes it is reduced to V2 meter per second then after collision with vehicle B it is together that the moves are a certain distance with velocity V3 and at last they will stop with a velocity V4 equal to 0. So this is the scenario. So let us uh, consider that the skidding distance upon application of brakes is like S1 equal to 40 meters which is given in the question and again after skidding they will travel a distance S2 together after collision and that will be 12 meters so let us take the case what will happen after collision the collision that is loss in kinetic energy of both vehicles will be equal to the work done against friction so let us consider the weight of this one is w a and weight of this one is w b so the kinetic energy will be like W A plus W B will be the mass total mass upon 2 G into V3 square minus V4 square. So we know that the kinetic energy is half M or M can be written as W Y G V square. So the velocity is given as the change in velocity that is V3 was the initial velocity and in turn it stops at V4 equal to 0 and thus we will get it like this and WA plus WB is the total mass, uh, total weight of both the vehicles divided by G will give us the mass and this two comes from this coefficient half and that will be equal to the total weight times the coefficient of friction times distance S2 and this is the work done against friction. So if we write all this we will get the simplified version like 
with the W A vehicle skidding uh, vehicle weighing 2 km Newton skids to a distance equal to 40 so this vehicle W A will be equal to 2 kN and this is 1 kN and V3 is what we have to find out and V4 is 0 and coefficient of friction F is given as 0 0.5 and S2 is given as 12 meters so upon solving all this we will get V3 is equal to 10.85 meters per second. Let's consider the second case that is at collision what will be the scenario. So at collision momentum before impact will be equal to momentum after impact right so during the time of collision according to the law of conservation of momentum We will get this that the momentum before impact will be equal to the momentum after impact so the momentum before impact will be the vehicle A's mass W by G times the velocity that is V2 by V2 because it will be applying the brakes and the velocity will be becoming V2 just before the time of the collision and speaking about the momentum after impact will be the sum of both vehicle A and B because they get stuck together upon G times V3 because V3 will be the velocity just after collision so we know the value of WA 2 kN WB to be 1 kN v3 to be 10.85 and thus we get v2 equal to 16.27 meters per second so let us take up the final case that is before collision so what will happen before collision that is loss in kinetic energy will be equal to work done against against the breaking force so W A upon 2 G times V 1 square minus V 2 square will be equal to W A times F times S1 so before collision the loss in kinetic energy and the work done against friction for against breaking force will be all considered with vehicle A because this is the only vehicle in the scenario and V2 will be the velocity after the brakes are applied so V2 we know to be 16 point W we know to be 2 kN and F is 0 0.5 S1 is 40 so thus on solving we get 
v1 equal to twenty five point six three. Therefore, initial velocity of the vehicle shall be v1 which is equal to 18 by 5 times 25.63 and we get the initial velocity as 92.27 kilometers per hour moving on to the next question this is a question related to the design of traffic signal and this is by the trial and trial cycle method so the question 3 says that the 15 minute traffic counts on crossroads a and b during peak hour are observed as 178 and 142 vehicles per lane respectively approaching the intersection in the direction of heavier traffic flow so the 15 minute traffic counts of road a and b are 178 and 142 Amber times required are 3 and 2 seconds respectively for two roads based on approach speeds, designs and signal timings by trial cycle method. So the amber time that is the yellow time is taken 3 and 2 seconds respectively. Assume an average time headway of 2.5 seconds during the green phase. So first of all in step 1 we consider that assuming trial cycle C1 as 50 seconds so we assume that in this 50 seconds all these things like red yellow green these three symbol uh, three signals will be working within this 50 seconds this is the time from one green to the next green next therefore if we consider 50 seconds number of cycles in 15 minutes will be equal to 15 into 60 that is 15 minutes into 60 seconds so this is this will be in seconds divided by 50 will give something like 18 yeah 18 will be the number of cycles in 15 minutes so and also green time average headway is given as 2.5 seconds so therefore GA shall be as 178 is the number of vehicles times 2.5 by 18 and that will be 24.72 seconds and for road B the green time shall be 142 times 2.5 upon 18 and that will be equal to 19.72 seconds so also Amber times AA is given as 3 second and AB is given as 2 seconds therefore total cycle length shall be equal to 
जी ए प्लस ए ए प्लस आर बी दैट इज इक्वल टू जी ए प्लस ए ए प्लस जी बी प्लस ए बी एंड सो ऑन एडिंग अप दिस फोर वैल्यूज वी गेट फोर्टी नाइन पॉइंट फोर फोर सेकेंड्स तो सिंस दिस इज लोअर देन अज्यूम सी वन इक्वल टू फिफ्टी सेकेंड्स सो देर फोर वी गो टू the next trial in the next trial this step 2 we will repeat the same things we will take c2 will be like let us take some one lesser value like 40 seconds so therefore number of cycles in 15 minutes shall be 900 upon 40 that is 22.5 cycles and therefore ga will be 178 Times two point five upon twenty two point five will give you nineteen. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Nineteen point seven eight. Nineteen point seven eight seconds. Again, GB will be equal to. One forty-two times two point five upon twenty-two point five, and that will be fifteen point seven eight seconds. Therefore, total cycle will be the sum of all these things and taking amber time as three and two seconds. So that will be. Forty point five six seconds. So we get a value little bit higher. Okay. So we are we can be satisfied with this thing, but let us take up some another trial. That is step three. Now we will take C two between forty and fifty. Let's take it forty five seconds. So therefore, number of cycle shall be equal to nine hundred upon forty-five. That will be twenty. Therefore, G A is one seventy-eight times two point five upon twenty as. Twenty-two point two five seconds and GB is one forty-two times two point five upon twenty, and that is seventeen point seven five seconds. Therefore, total cycle time will be the sum of all these things, and that is forty-five seconds. So now we got a value. Equal to our assumption. So we will consider that forty-five second is the total cycle length, and therefore G A is twenty-two point five, A A S three, G B as seventeen point seven five, and A B as two.
moving on to the next question design two phase traffic signal by Webster's method using the following data so data is given for road A and B mm, the also the average normal flow in vehicles per hour is given and the saturation flow in vehicles per hour is given for both the roads also take all the rate time required for pedestrian crossing as 12 second and amber time as 2 second for each lane so in the Webster's method there's a formula like YA is equal to QA upon SA where QA will be the average traffic flow and SA is the saturation flow and this will be coming out to be like 0 0.32 this is for road A and for road B YB will be equal to QB upon SB that is 250 upon 1000 and it is 0 0.25 also capital Y is YA plus YB and that is the sum of these two it is equal to 0 0.57 7 and L will be equal to 2N plus R that is 2 times 2 plus 12 as the time for pedestrian is given as 12 the red time for pedestrian is given as 12 seconds and number of lanes are 2 so 2 times 2 plus 12 will be given as 16 seconds so therefore C naught will be equal to 1.5 L plus 5 upon 1 minus y so that is 1.5 times 16 plus 5 upon 1 minus 0 0.57 and this will give c naught as 67.5 seconds so the green time for road a will be y a upon capital y times c naught minus l and that is 0 0.32 upon 0 0.57 times 67.5 minus 16 and that will be approximately 29 seconds and similarly for road b green time will be yb upon capital y times c naught minus l will be given by 0 0.25 upon 0 0.57 times 67.5 minus 16 and it will be 22.6 seconds therefore the total cycle time is given by the sum of 29 plus 22.6 plus 12 plus 4 and it is 67.6 seconds is on the rotary section that is the width of a carriageway approaching an intersection is given as 15 meters and the entry and exit width at the rotary is also given that is 10 meter the traffic approaching the intersection from four sides is given in the figure so just try to understand the figure so four roads from west east north and south are coming and intersecting and suppose you are considering the traffic which is coming from west see the first arrow that 400 see the first arrow from the road west that is 400 will be traveling towards the north 500 will be going towards 
east and 510 will go towards the south facing road and similarly we have it for all the other three roads and total we have it something like this uh, the traffic approaching the intersection from four sides is as shown in the figure and find the capacity of the rotary using the given data. So first of all the entry and the exit width that is E1 and E2 respectively are given as 10 meters. Also the first is the weaving width the weaving width that is small w will be given by e1 plus e2 upon 2 and this thing added to 3.5 it is given by 10 plus 10 plus 2 plus 3.5 we have it like 13.5 meters is the weaving width next we try to get the weaving length and it will be l small l that is equal to 4 times the weaving width and that is 4 times 13.5 and it will be 54 meter so we have 54 meter as the weaving length so now next is the important step that is calculation for proper shunning ratio that is the small p so we know that small p suppose for east to south for east to south we can take it as weaving traffic upon the total traffic now have a close look over the figure over here just have a close look over it that and just try to guess what are the weaving traffic for the part E to S so the roads the passer by the passengers who are coming from west taking left turn turning from north east and going towards south at the end that is for the 510 number of people these are one kind of the weaving traffic so the weaving traffic refers to the traffic which we will be crossing the front of the east side road that is so it will be that the ones traveling from west to south that is 510 plus the ones traveling from north to south that is 650 plus the ones traveling from uh, the ones traveling from east to west that is 500 and the ones traveling from east to north that is 600 and the total traffic through east is 510 plus 650 plus 500 plus 600 this will be there and along with it the ones traveling from east to south that is 250 they are actually uh, using the road E and S but they will not weave it with this section 
so 250 and also the ones traveling from north to west that is 375 so we have PES as 0 0.783 similarly for P west to north we have the weaving traffic as from west to north the ones who will be weaving are Five hundred five that is from west to east plus five hundred ten that is the ones traveling from west to south plus the ones traveling from south to north that is three fifty plus the ones traveling from uh, traveling from east to north that is 600 divided by 505 plus 510 plus 350 plus 600 plus also 400 plus 370y the traffic from south to east and from west to north will not be so the answers are somewhat like this and uh, please check it out whether it is matching to yours or not so out of all these four that is this two and this two we have this one as the highest 0 0.783 so we take that the highest proportionality ratio will give the man minimum capacity hence capital P will be small p is to south that will be 0 0.783 as this is the maximum and it will give the minimum capacity therefore we use the formula for this QES will be equal to 280 times 13.5 times 1 plus 10 upon 13.5 times 1 minus 0 0.783 upon 3 whole thing divided by 1 plus 13.5 upon 54 so it will be coming out to be 3890.1 vehicles per hour thank you so this was all about the numericals related to traffic engineering if you are having any kind of doubts please do not hesitate to write in the comment section below and also uh, the theory part is given in the um, the link for the theory is given in the description you can check all the links and thank you please like and share my video also sub subscribe to my channel if you are new thank you